We're going to visit Vintage Vinyl, one of the landmark uh, locations in the Del Mar Roof District in St. Louis. And we're going to talk to the manager and see what's uh, happening at Vintage Vinyl for 2022. We're here at Vintage Vinyl with owner manager Tom Papa. Bagman. And and aka Bagman. And he has uh, graciously decided to answer a couple of questions we've had for our Geezerology uh, subscribers. And and Tom, you've been in the music business for many, many years and Vintage Vinyl's been here for like uh, four decades plus. So for 2022, what were the top three selling groups, regardless of category, at Vintage Vinyl? Honestly, I don't know yet, because we haven't uh, ended the year. But uh, what I have noticed is that um, there's been a great resurgence in uh, vinyl as far as uh, music from the last decade, the decade before, the decade before, the decade before, the decade before. And people in their 20s buy more Sinatra on vinyl than Elvis Presley. That's fairly astonishing, Tom. I call it the hipster martini dynamic. And do you think that was something, you know, that would be like maybe their grandparents' music. Exactly. Uh, and do you think they dug through their grandparents' uh, catalog? or, or is it, <laughs> no, I think uh, they just realized that uh, Frank Sinatra singing boudoir songs make uh, a good sonic uh, accompaniment to to a uh, $15 cocktail. Okay. And then format-wise, uh, I'm going to take this wild stab here that vinyl is outselling uh, the CDs and, and the other formats. Are... It is, but... In the past 14 to 15 months, we've seen a definite increase in CD sales. Part of that is because often new music will be available on CD and the vinyl is either not available or uh, customers waiting for the pressing plant to repress the vinyl, which may, after it initially becomes available, might not be available for another month to five months. Okay, and we discussed a little bit earlier as far as what 21st century groups you would recommend for baby boomers or geezers to give half a chance to listen to. Um, any entry point groups? Uh, well, let's start with genres. I think Sturgill Simpson is brilliant in the country and folk field. Uh, in jazz, I think uh, Mr. Batiste's albums, Jean Batiste, I think his albums are well, well worth listening to. Um, as far as new rock, I don't particularly listen to a lot, and I'll explain that this way. As William Blake said, there are songs of, ex of innocence and songs of experience. So it really doesn't matter what I may think of a new rock or pop act because I'm not 18. And a lot of times when I listen to uh, new bands, I'm listening clinically. I'm not necessarily wishing to hear it again, but I'm going, oh, okay, that's their influence. Oh, this is what they're trying to do. Oh, the vocalist has a nice vocal range. Oh, fuck it, too much auto-tune. <laughs> okay. But it's, uh, you know, it's all ear candy. And as I heard a DJ in Kingston, Jamaica, once say on the radio, as long as I'm on the air, Jamaica safe because as the politicians of the day try to deal with hunger and unemployment I've got the Jamaican mind well spent I'm playing music where people are on the corner digging it because if the music wasn't playing goodness gracious 
And Tom, I'm going to throw a group at you that we, we found out on the billboard that the most, I guess they had the most downloads plus vinyl sales. Bad Bunny? Bad Bunny, a hip hop artist. He, uh, yeah. he is a most high millionaire at this point. And uh, to quote Mr. Simon, every generation throws its heroes on the pop charts. I would also point out that the uh, phenomena of streaming now has it on the planet where I would say 90% of all music consumption is done streaming, which leaves us with the physical in a very enviable niche. Okay. And I hope you have a musical day. Tom, thank you so much for taking a few minutes out to speak to our geezerology audience and uh, you have a great holiday season. Thanks. Thank you.